In the bustling city of Lagos, Nigeria, there was a young woman named Adana whose beauty was so striking that it turned heads wherever she went. With her glowing skin, full lips, and a body that curved in all the right places, Adana was a sight to behold. But it wasn't just her physical beauty that made her special, she also had a warm, infectious smile and a kind heart that drew people to her. Adana came from a humble family and had to work hard to make ends meet. She spent her days selling oranges on the side of the road, her voice ringing out as she called to Passersby, inviting them to purchase her juicy, sweet fruit. At first, people would stop just to admire her beauty, but they quickly learned that her oranges were the best in the city, perfectly ripe, bursting with flavor, and always sold at a fair price. As word of Adana's beauty and delicious oranges spread, men from all walks of life began to flock to her little roadside stand. Some came just to catch a glimpse of her radiant smile, while others claimed they were there solely for the fruit. But no matter their reasons, they all ended up buying far more oranges than they had intended, unable to resist the combination of Adana's charm and the quality of her wares. One of Adana's most loyal customers was Emeka, a wealthy businessman who owned a chain of successful restaurants across the city. From the moment he first laid eyes on Adana, he was smitten. He would often find excuses to stop by her stand, even when he had no need for oranges, just to bask in her presence and strike up a conversation. Ameka was a smooth talker, and he would regale Adana with stories of his business success and lavish lifestyle, hoping to impress her. But Adana was no fool, she could see right through his bravado and false charms. She appreciated his patronage, of course, but she was not interested in becoming just another trophy on his arm. As the months went by, Ameka's infatuation with Adana only grew stronger. He would buy crates upon crates of her oranges, far more than he could possibly use in his restaurants, just to keep her stand open longer and have more opportunities to chat with her. Adana found his attention flattering, but she remained steadfastly focused on her work and her goal of saving enough money to open her own fruit stall in the market. One day, as Ameka was making his usual visit to Adana's stand, he noticed a group of young men openly ogling her from across the street. Their leers and crude comments made his blood boil, and he found himself feeling strangely protective over the beautiful orange seller. Without thinking, Ameka marched over to the group of men and confronted them, demanding that they show Adana some respect. Words were exchanged, tempers flared, and before long, a scuffle had broken out right there on the busy street. Adana watched in horror as the fight unfolded, fearing for Ameka's safety. She tried to call out to him, to urge him to stop, but her voice was drowned out by the shouts and jeers of the crowd that had gathered. Just when it seemed like the situation couldn't get any more out of hand, a police officer arrived on the scene and broke up the brawl. Ameka, bloodied but triumphant, was arrested and hauled off to the local police station. Adana was beside herself with worry. She had never asked for Ameka's protection, nor had she given him any reason to think she needed defending. But deep down, she knew that his actions, misguided as they were, had been born out of a genuine fondness for her. Without a second thought, Adana gathered up her earnings for the day and rushed to the police station, determined to pay whatever fine was necessary to secure Ameka's release. She may not have returned his romantic feelings, but she cared for him deeply as a friend and valued customer. After a tense few hours and more than a few stern lectures from the offices on duty, Adana was finally able to post Ameka's bail. As he emerged from the holding cell, bruised and sheepish, Adana couldn't help but feel a swell of affection for the foolish man who had risked so much on her behalf. From that day on, a new understanding blossomed between Adana and Ameka. He realized that her beauty was more than just physical, it was a radiant inner light that shone through in her kindness, her strength, and her unwavering spirit. And Adana saw that beneath Ameka's bravado was a good man with a loyal heart, even if he sometimes went about showing it in the wrong way. Their relationship evolved into a deep, lasting friendship built on mutual respect and admiration. Ameka became Adana's most ardent supporter, helping her to save up enough money to finally open her own fruit stall in the bustling market. And Adana, in turn, became a constant source of guidance and wisdom, keeping Ameka grounded and reminding him of what truly mattered in life. As the years passed, Adana's beauty only grew more radiant, 
her confidence and self-assurance shining through in every warm smile and melodic laugh. And while she continued to turn heads wherever she went, she no longer attracted the kinds of unwanted attention that had once plagued her. For the men who frequented her market stall knew better than to make crude advances or disrespectful comments. They had seen firsthand how fiercely a Mecca, and indeed, Adana herself, would defend her honor and demand the respect she deserved. In the end, Adana's beauty was more than just a pretty face or a shapely figure. It was a force of nature, a magnetic presence that drew people in and made them want to bask in her warmth and light. And for those lucky enough to know her, to truly see the woman behind the beauty, she was an inspiration, a reminder that kindness, strength, and an unshakable spirit can make even the most stunning looks pale in comparison.